What's up, everyone? Standard issue bumper here. As per usual, Niantic dropped a bomb on us after we recorded last Sunday. The friendship and trading announcement has been made. The update is live. We're waiting for a client-side change for this to go into effect, but trading and friendship and all this great stuff is coming to the game. We'll be covering that in detail next episode. And then today, Thursday, June 21st, notifications are starting to roll out that Regice will be the next legendary boss. This is going to be going through July 19th. So a lot of news happening this week. But for now, enjoy episode 36, and we'll go into all this new stuff next week in episode 37. Word. What's up, Pokemon Go trainers? It is Lured Up, episode 36. I'm one of your hosts, Adam, joined by the, the main host, Ken, and co-host, <laughs> Melissa. What's up, guys? Hey! <laughs> hey. I love when Adam does the intro. <laughs> no, this is the Pokemon Go podcast where we take the game super serious and ourselves not so much. And today is Sunday, June 17th, 2018, Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Happy Father's out there. Day. <laughs> Ken and I are both fathers. Yes. And it was a good it was a good happy Father's Day for me because Melissa took me raiding. Oh, that is romantic. I, I, I know. Dreams could, could come true. <laughs> uh, no fucking no, shinies. I, uh, <laughs> I spent the celebration of Father's Day with um my fiance's family and she happened to get me a suitcase and some, you know, locks for my luggage and um, one of those name tags. Oh, for GoFest? For GoFest, yes. Oh, oh she that's hooked it really up. really nice. Yeah, I was super excited about it. That's awesome. That is super cool. That's very nice. supportive of her. Very cool. Yes. I Not me. I need I need much. one book bag and I'm good. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> I'm going to have more equipment that I'm bringing than clothes. <laughs> Oh man. Yeah, I was thinking I'm like do I bring the microphone? Like what do I do? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna, we're going to talk about that because uh we might we I, we're in the works. I, I want to do a a ultra round table. round table with a couple of the different podcast hosts from the Pokemon Go community. I think that would be really awesome and uh they're all going to be in well, one the spot. The Yeti's perfect for that. But uh today's episode is going to be brought to you by patreoncom slash gotta watch them all. I want to shout out our lured up supporter tier, Jessica, Brittany, Matt, Keith, Terry. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate your support. You are the backbone of this show and we really appreciate it. Thanks so much. And I do want to promote the Discord tier. 1 buck a month gets you access to our Discord. Our Discord has been a stupid amount of fun. It's exceptionally active, and it's funny now that Melissa is on the Discord because... I can't keep up with them. (laughs) (laughs) I really can't. You guys are ridiculous. It's really fun. Oh, so we're trying something different today with our recording. Uh, Melissa's actually in the other room right now on the laptop with with her own microphone. We We would typically share a mic sitting in front of one computer. So I actually moved her to another room, so we're separated, and I think it's going to end up with some higher audio fidelity. We'll see what happens. Ooh. Big yeah, one. and I moved the microphone, so hopefully you guys noticed that last <laughs> week on last 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 week's recording. <laughs> yeah, Adam sounds crispy now. Crispy. I'm like a, a crunchy Dorito straight from the fresh open bag. <laughs> Crunch. Ooh, I love Doritos. <laughs> on today's show, cool. we are going to be talking about Community Day number six. Larvitar happened yesterday. It was a lot of fun. Hmm. The, the water festival is wrapping up, and uh, we'll talk about how that went for all of us. Pokemon Go made an official statement on their summer tour. So there's going to be three key events through the summer and a lot of cool stuff that's attached to that. We'll run through all of it. There's two unknown events that happened in the past week. One that's still going on. We'll talk about that. And the Silk Road put out definitive shiny encounter rates. This was a three-part research series that they did. We're going to be covering this on the next three episodes of Lured Up. Today, we're going to be covering the wild encounter rates for shiny Pokemon, and there's a ton of data to back all this stuff up, and you know, I'm going to go with this as being the definitive, absolute shiny rate. So this stuff's important if you really want to get out there and grind, so you can see, like, am I doing something wrong here, or am I just not you know, playing the odds right? 
And then we're going to do an interesting battle party at the end of the show. Uh, rather than, you know, we're always so focused on raid boss, raid boss, you know, high weather DPS, all this kind of stuff. We're going to take a little bit of a break from that. We're going to put together a battle party of six Pokemon that we like simply because they look good. <laughs> so we're going to, you know, Fashion looks matter. function today. Exactly. So it doesn't matter if they, <laughs> they could be the, the shittiest attacker in the game. It doesn't matter. We're going to go just by looks and be, you know, very shallow here and just just do the good looking stuff. So that, that should be fun because, you know, who, who doesn't, you know, Pokemon are freaking cute. So let's let's embrace the cuteness. You know what I'm saying? Well, this one, these ones look cool. These ones look good. We'll do a cute one in the future. Yeah, like well, cute, cute, like cute can be a cute. Yeah, cute could be its own category for sure because there is a lot of freaking cute Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's talk about Community Day number six. Larvitar happened yesterday, June sixteenth. This was a Saturday in the states. Um, I want to talk about Ooh. how each of us did. Now, I was working, but I took an extended lunch and just drove around for about two hours. And uh, I, I got a lot of gaming in, so I uh, I kind of pulled it off, which I'm very excited about. So let me uh, let me give you my stats. And I kind of I took note of all my stuff because I wanted to track you know how I did during the time. But my community day door to door. So from the beginning of the event, I took a bunch of screenshots of my XP and all this kind of stuff, and then did it at the end of the event. This is what I net over that time that I played: two hundred and seventy three thousand five hundred and two XP. So I was running a lucky egg the entire time. I didn't do any raids. It's all from catches. I was doing the go plus and doing hand catches on any larvitar I would do by hand. And then I would just go plus everything extra. I picked up, I was running a star piece. I picked up 85,926 dust. I ended up catching 155 larvitar. I had three or four run from me on screen. And I think like 35 run from the go plus because I took the, you know, I had the screenshot of how many I encountered, not just how many I had caught. And uh, so I had a lot run from the go plus and then ended the day with 10 shiny Larvitar, which was freaking fantastic. And for once I got a decent one, I got an 87% shiny. Typically the sign, the shinies that, that I would catch would be absolute garbage. So I was happy. I got a good one, but 155 Larvitar. And I was, uh, I'm very happy with my, you know, 10 shiny Adam. How did you do? I got, I'll go in reverse here. I got, well, I didn't screenshot all my stuff, so shame on me. I'm sorry, Terry. I'll do better next next community day. <laughs> I only got seven shiny. I have no idea how many I caught, but I was paying attention to how many actually, like, popped out of balls, and only two popped out of balls, and only one of those two ran. Wow, I only had okay. one Lavatar run on me. Which I thought was super suspicious. Well, yeah, like, let, we're going to talk about that because I, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of talk going on right now with the catch rate at large, not just with Larvitar, but with everything having some kind of increased catch rate. We'll get into that. One of our patrons actually brought it up in the Discord, and I did a little investigating, and I was like, oh shit, there's a lot of people talking about this on Reddit. So you definitely you're you're definitely right, Adam, because there were they were very easy to catch, and uh, yeah, I, mean, I, more, I was ultra like, more easy than Bulbasaur. I, I'm gonna have to disagree with you guys. <laughs> Easier than Marie. Wait, like, you're gonna you disagree? Kidding? Wait, what? You're disagreeing? Oh, great. Here comes the internet. Mm-hmm. No, I'll let you Put finish. It away. Go, Put ahead. It away. go ahead. I'm gonna let you finish, but yeah, go ahead. Um, I had a I had a lucky egg on for the most part the entire time. I think there was like my game crashed like five or six times. It game like, has been unstable, man. It's been very I'm not, unstable. I'm not asking for you know hour extension or anything like that. I blame it on my phone. But the game crashed a bunch of times. I was down my one of my lucky eggs. I, I missed 20 minutes in total of a lucky egg and star piece and whatnot. But mm. I was able to accumulate a bunch of stardust. And honestly, at this point, it's like, I think I'm going to hold on to my stardust until I reach level 40. I think that's like my <laughs> new goal. Well, you're, you're going to need to build it up. So you didn't you didn't cash it in on any Tyranitar? I didn't cash it in on oh, any Tyranitar. Because... Because listen to this, some of the Tyranitars that I caught, or, well, I had two Pupitars all ready to go, and they were both like 96, 98%. Oh, nice. So, and they were high levels to begin with, because I hatched them high. I think one of them's like 2,700 and something CP, so oh, I'm wow. like, I'm okay with that. And then pretty much anything else that I evolved after that was, um, like, the charge move was Fire Blast. I'm like, great, <laughs> now I have to waste a charge, a charge DM, come on. 
But all in all, I had I had a blast. It was a lot of fun. The community, like everybody, was driving. Like that's because yeah. we all know where shiny spawns happen during the event. So we all kind of like migrate to those certain areas. You know, Holly was talking community days get ruined by cars. Like you, people need to be walking around in parks. You know, it's like yo, know, nothing is better than grinding a community day in a car. It's the it's the most efficient way to do it. Right, and it's like you can community community day like you can be there doing your Silk Road handshakes, which I did a few of those, which was awesome. I've never had a lot of people like be interested, and this time they were interested. So oh, it was that's awesome. cool. You know, you have that first hour or half hour before the event, and then into the event as well. Like you can walk around for that first half hour, but then as soon as you hit all the Pokemon in that that area, it's like they take time to respond. So. Jump in a car, go to the next place. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, and like I said, I was at work, so this was the first community day that I was really split up from Melissa. But so Melissa was out on her own, and, and I get Melissa go. Let, let's hear it. How, how'd it go for you? It, it sounds great. It was great the already. fucking worst community day of all time. <laughs> Honestly, like it reminds me of what was the last one I did by my? No, I did you, you one did, other one. You, you did Dratini by yourself. Yes. I was working because that was a Saturday also. Yeah. So uh, I had problems with the Go Plus with the Dratini. This time around, I thought I was going to have a great day. We went down to Asray Park and Boardwalk where I knew that there was a bunch of stops. and We could be outside and walk around and stuff. And since it was a nice day, we get down to Asbury. Like everything's lit up. I'm like, all right, cool. It's going to be awesome. My Go Plus connects. Right? <laughs> Ooh, I was like, I was like, holy fucking shit. I can't believe it. This is going to be amazing. About 45 minutes in, you know, I remember to throw on a lucky egg and the game just crashes and it just stays crashed for 90% of the community day. She couldn't I'm, get back in. I couldn't get back in. I, like I did catch a shiny within the first half an hour. And then I was like, fuck, I got to put the lucky egg on. But I was like, all right, I got one. So good. I'm, at least I got one going. Then just crash. It just got, I had the spinning circle of death the entire time. And then it logged me out. And then it would just, it wouldn't log in. It would go halfway up. Like, would jo- I felt like I was in Josh's shoes. Like, I'm just sitting there, like, trying to reload, 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 reload. Yeah. And you, know, you weren't alone because kill someone. the people on the other side of the world that, that had Community Day happen for them before here in the States, they had a shit ton of issues with the same kind of thing. And it wasn't one – wasn't necessarily even a login issue. There was just total server kind of meltdown. So there was – That's what I was having too. Real was shitty performance, frame rate. Crazy, I was having all these crazy error messages that I've never seen before. Yeah, and, and like people like, were well, like, what the hell is this? they started blaming it on their devices, and they're like, you know what, though? There's a lot of this stuff that's happening server side. So, in, I believe, in the Japanese region, they they actually extended the community day by an extra two hours. So, they made the, the day five hours long, but you actually still got less than three hours worth of functioning servers. And then, like, everyone in the States were like, oh, shit, you're giving them two hours. We want two hours. You know, like, yeah, like, hitting their chest like King Kong. You know, like, it's so greedy. Like, because well, that's how we are. No, I know. <laughs> the <laughs> USA. <laughs> it's I, – I, I was fortunate because I didn't have one issue the entire time. But oh, tons of people. I, want to, I did wind up um, – once I gave up playing the game after a while and I was like, <laughs> let's just fucking leave. I can't take this anymore. And we started driving home. I accidentally turned the game back on. Like I hit it with my hand as while we were driving and it loaded. And I was like, holy shit. And I, had, <laughs> I, had, I was like, I got a half an hour or like 40 minutes left of the thing. I was like, I'm not even going to worry about it because it's just going to stress me out. And I was like, well, let me just see if the Go Plus will turn on. The Go Plus actually connected and I actually caught two shinies with the Go Plus. Yeah, that's which awesome. Which was... Which never happens. So I was very, I was excited about that, but very pissed off that I only got four the entire fucking day. Yeah, but look, and, you got uh, the three. The three is the minimum. Like that's the that's the goal of any three stage, you know, evolution. Like you got to get at least the three so you could have one of each when it's all said and done. Mm-hmm. But, but th- I, I was mad that I couldn't really play play. So 
I had a back to back to back shiny experience. So I had three shinies in a row. And I ended up out of my 10, two of them were from the Go Plus. So I got the three back to back was pretty early on. And then in the last half hour that I played, now it's not the last half hour of the event, but the last half hour that I played, I caught four with two being from the Go Plus. So I was I was very psyched about that. Now, see, I've heard that that one of one of the people in my community got three in a row as yeah. well. Like, how crazy is that? Yeah, it's it's they, yeah. I, What's up with uh, some of our followers getting, or some people getting twenty one fucking shots? Oh my god! Are you no, kidding me? So there's like, someone in our group got twenty three, twenty three shinies. Now he was with the same. They rented a they rented a van this time around. Obviously, I was there. I was at work, but so they they were all in the one van, and one person in the van got twenty three, and the next person down, like in in tally, was eleven. So it went from twenty three to eleven. And uh, wow. he just, yeah, he just got freaking lucky. And he was, you know, using the gocha, you know, so that was just like catching, you know, nonstop auto auto catch and all that. So wow, the uh, the highest catch rate for shinies in my area or my group or whatever was fifteen. That's still high. That's still crazy. That's awesome. Right, because I got nine on Charmander, and I was legitimately like going just for the shiny. Like that's what I wanted. I still caught them, but more more so with the go plus. Like I would check it back out check it back out and let the go yeah. plus you know right right take its chances you see now the the thing that's that we we have to talk about with this particular community day is not the shinies and how many catches and xp and all that shit like that's that's great that's awesome you know it's fun as the experience but when you stop and think about the actual effect of everyone catching between 100 and 200 larvitar what that does to the meta when Tyranitar has such a prominent position in the meta. So now you're going to have people that may have had one or two Tyranitar to this point, one that might have been good and one shitty one or something like that, but now all of a sudden they're coming out of an event with 100 or 200 Larvitar to pick from, six, seven, eight hundred candy to, to spend, and now this is going to completely shift the meta because now everyone's going to have top tier Tyranitars, where the before that was it was still kind of an elitist level, you know, god tier Pokemon when it comes to, you know, non legendary Pokemon. So now there's gonna be the the scene and the meta scene is just gonna be flooded with these potentially high powered, you know, Tyranitar. So I think that this is I always thought that like whenever they did Larvitar, it was gonna completely break the meta and you know, what what are we gonna be able to do? Not much, but you know, I I bet you're going to start to see like better performing Tyranitar defenders in gyms because now people have a better pool of Pokemon to choose from. And then let's talk about the SmackDown Stone Edge Tyranitar. This is going to be the best rock attacker in the entire game. This is going to completely nullify Gollum completely. Like the Gollum, my precious, is going to <laughs> completely null nullify Golem. Like because this is the you know the shittiest Tyranitar with SmackDown and Stone Edge is better than the best Golem with the same moveset. So it's, it totally breaks the meta. But, you know, when PvP comes around, that's one of the really, uh, you know, be the people that have the 96, the 98, the 100% Tyranitars that will, you know, be able to give this this Pokemon, you know, better relevance like it used to have. Now it's just the market is flooded. Everyone's going to have Tyranitar. It's not special anymore. And as far as gym defenders go... You're not going to be able to defend a gym with anything flying, pretty much. Exactly. Exactly. Because it's just... Because everybody has the super yep. strong, super powerful, the, the best attacker in the game for Rock. Yeah. Just, just going to annihilate anything that has flying. So, And they even nerfed SmackDown a little bit before uh, the event. And that that's typically what they've done. With Blastburn and Frenzy Plant, they did the same thing, where these were looking to be meta influencing moves and then right before the event they got their kind of the carpet pulled out from underneath them and completely nerfed down to shit with smackdown as the fast move it got nerfed but not to a point where it was still where it lost all its relevance like tyranitar with this double rock is still the best rock attacker in the game so i really like the fact that the water festival was going on at the same time because there were so many shinies to choose from on screen. You know, I'm still seeing Shelter 
and you know ammonites were still spawning i was actually still seeing more kabuto than normal so it's like all these you know whalemer all these pokemon that could be shiny it's very exciting i thought that was kind of a cool thing that to see them overlap like that and i thought that i would get a shiny of something other than a lavatar at the same time because there's so many spawning and i'm just go plusing and uh, yeah you know, i was hoping for that magic so card pokemon yeah i was hoping i was hoping for i'm still hoping for that freaking magic card <laughs> i actually took a, cre- a cool screenshot at the end of the community day it was a really funny cluster spawn it was five larvitar uh, a Whalmer, a Swablu, and I think a Shelter. And All I was shiny just like, stuff. Yeah, I was just like, one of these has got to be now. <laughs> now. <laughs> well, we got, you know, let's talk about Adam's shiny tinfoil hat theory of there being like shiny hot spots. Let's call <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to call out Jersey J, who's now caught three shiny Magikarp in his freaking house and more specifically what? in his bathroom. His bathroom. <laughs> Oh my god! I was like, dude, you go fishing down that toilet for some magic. Oh my god! But how how crazy is I that? I know he's he's reaching in, he's pulling out gold. You know, and, no, but honestly though, it's like like just like Adam's job. You know, they're they're catching multiples of shinies now. Jay's saying he he's caught three shiny just in one room of his house. Like, could there be some kind of relevance to this? I don't know. Well, I'll never forget where Josh caught his shiny, so I'll go back there all day long and just (laughs) sit and wait for Magikarps. I'll sit there all day tomorrow. So we mentioned the Water Festival. It's wrapping up in a couple days. It goes through, I think, uh, 1 p.m. on the 21st, and we'll say goodbye to Kyogre, and something else is going to be coming. Who knows what they're going to do here? This was kind of a shorter window. You think so? Yeah, probably, right? Yeah, they're going to bring back the fire event for a small for a small window, just like the water festival length, like a two week event, two week yeah. um, with a two week legendary a raid. Fest, right? That will community day then go community fest. day then go fest. So yeah, hey man, that's that's pretty good, but that's that seems very reasonable. <laughs> But the water festival is wrapping up. I I really enjoyed this one. Um, you know, like I had that one shiny shelter, so I did have a shiny, and dude, shiny checking is just a lot of fun. It's just like that little thrill of, you know, it's like a, like a mini game. It's just a little bit of excitement, you know, with the, you know, it's just a regular old catch. But I felt like it was a really good event, and uh, I hope they continue to do this style event where it's not just a specific spawn, like one spawn. There's a bunch of different Pokemon that can spawn. Hopefully they'll be shiny. And then on top of that, there's going to be these different things going on, special 2K eggs, different raid bosses, an XP or a Stardust bonus, like all this stuff, it really makes it for a well-fleshed-out event. I don't know. I thought this was a lot of fun, and I like that it went over Community Day. I do, too, actually, that they overlapped. I like that it overlapped. Yeah, hell yeah, because well, there's just so many shiny opportunities, and it's like that's that's the excitement. And it was crazy to get, you know, you're like you're throwing your excellent curveballs or whatever and hitting, getting that 12, 1,200 or whatever it's, uh, XP. Yeah, and hell then, yeah. And then you get, you get a ton of dust if you... Uh, if you're throwing on any of the water Pokemon, well, that's you get your star yeah. piece down, so you're getting like three times that. Like what? Well, because I lost my two the... star piece and two lucky eggs. <laughs> I'm so annoyed, and uh, I had no coins to buy any others. Oh, why not? Hmm. I wonder. All right, I let's did talk have about a cool the shirt. Let's talk about the Pokemon <laughs> Go Summer Tour that was announced <laughs> on uh, PokemonGoLive.com. This is. Big news. They they typically have not given us this much news in advance uh, for the events. So this is really exciting. So they detail the next three major events that are going on internationally. The Safari Zone that's in Dortmund, Germany. That's happening June 30th through July 1st. Go Fest, which is July 14th to 15th. And then they don't have a date for Yokosuka yet, but there's going to be a Safari Zone in Japan. That's going to be at the end of the late summer. So if you remember last year during Go Fest, they had the Global Catch Challenge where there was goals that the people that were in Chicago were trying to reach versus people worldwide with how many catches. And then as you unlock certain amount of catches, you unlock different buffs in the game, whether it was extra candy or Stardust or XP or whatever it could be. So now they're making this more complex. It's not a global challenge per se. It's a regional challenge based on these specific events. So within these events, there's their own set of kind of localized challenges here so this is they they all follow the same format so the way it works is there's going to be 
the people at the events have to complete 100,000 research tasks during the event. So those are the local people that are at each of these events during these time windows. And then there's a global version about it. Instead of having it over be over the whole world, they break it up into regions. Europe, Middle East, and Africa, the Americas, and then Asia Pacific. Five million research tasks completed. And then each of these events is going to have different payouts for reaching these goals. And then if you complete all of those goals for each event, it unlocks a bonus reward. If you unlock all bonus rewards, it unlocks the ultra bonus reward. <laughs> so there's a lot of com you know stuff that's going to be kind of piling on top of itself here, which is pretty neat. And anytime time they've done some, any kind of global catch thing, we've always made it. You know whether they're fluffing the numbers or not, we always hit the, hit the goal. So you know I'm pretty confident that we'll be able to do this, especially if it's going to be just research tasks. Is that's one of the easier things to kind of turn over. Five million is a lot, but, you know, if everyone does a couple, you know, we're all good. So they did give um, information about what's going to be happening at these events that is going to affect the world. So the Safari Zone, apparently in this Dortmund, Germany park that this is taking place, there's a giant rose garden. So to celebrate that, they are releasing shiny roselia and that'll be released worldwide with this event. So come June oh, 30th, uh, at the end of the event, uh, July, after July 1st, we get we will have Roselia in-game shiny. Then during GoFest, Plusle and Minin will be shiny, released Ooh. worldwide. And then in addition to that, Alolan Diglett and its line and Alolan <gasps> Geodude will be released in-game oh worldwide. Oh, my God, yes. So two awesome, awesome... Uh, Alolan Pokemon for different reasons. Alolan Diglett with its just beautiful hair. You know, the Doug Trio is freaking amazing. And then Geodude, when you evolve up to Golem, it becomes an electric type. So there's diversity implication over the whole meta with these different forms. So that's all happening because of Chicago, because of GoFest. And then they haven't released anything about Yokosuka because this is the one that's still the furthest out. But I'm sure there's going to be some shiny or different Alolan attached to that as well. So all this shit is happening over the course of the summer. So Pokemon Go it's is they're, they're setting themselves up. Yeah, it's really cool the way they're doing. I it hope I hope they don't set them up for failure for the winter because they're doing so much cool shit right now. And you know, winter sucks ass to play. Yeah, fucking Pokemon yeah. Go. It sucks, 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 sucks. So unless they do cool events like this to make people get the fuck out of their house and bundle up, I'm like. You know, some people who have no problem putting a hundred layers on and yeah. standing well, outside in the cold. Or <laughs> you got to remember too, though. Come November, Let's Go is coming out on the Switch. That's going to be Pokemon Go integration. You're going to see a huge surge during November, and then ultimately, you know, December with the holiday season and all that. So, yeah, mechanically, like, shiny Deli Bird hype. <laughs> hell yeah! <laughs> no, but you could, uh, you know, that would be a good time to release some kind of PvP or something like that, or some kind of online element when people are inside in the cold. That's a good point. That would be awesome. I like the way they're uh, they're kind of detailing all this stuff with you know and getting it you know local challenges and kind of regional challenges and then they're all cumulative to like bonus challenges. Really cool shit. I, I'm I'm excited for it. And uh, you know, it's, these Safari Zone events are always awesome. I love seeing the photos just because of the scale. There's just you know so many freaking people and the Japanese event. I'm I can't wait to see the the footage from that because. It's like millions of people. Like, you know, you go to Chicago, it's like, all right, 20, 30,000 people. Some of these safari zones, 60,000 people. And, you know, but, the, you know, when they did Yokohama last year, there was 5 million people that went through over that week. So it's like the scale is just freaking insane internationally. It's so cool. All right. Unknown events. Uh, there's two of them that, is, that have been going on the uh, at E3, which happened just this past week in Los Angeles. The... Unknown spelling L E T S G O, let's go, and the first time release of the exclamation point unknown. So it was let's go plus the exclamation point spawning in the LA Convention Center and outside in that, you know, general area. But this is the first time the exclamation point has been released. So that's kind of cool that they added that. So now the only unknown that we're missing at this point is the question mark. So we'll see when that happens. And then we have a World Cup of football going on right now. And in Latin America, they are 
each country, whenever the country, I guess, is in, has a game, has a match, I don't know what you call a soccer thing, I just follow Quidditch, they're releasing <laughs> the unknown that spell Vamos, which is like a cheer, like, you know, go team kind of thing, and then the abbreviation for the, comp- for the country that it's in or something relevant to the country. So, like, in Brazil, it would spell out Vamos B-R, and Peru was P-E-R. Mexico, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so it was all, all different, and it was – these are – Every time the, the country is involved in the World Cup match, that's when this unknown is happening. So we've had five countries happen already because they've had their matches. So we're expecting that as the World Cup progresses and different teams are playing, you're going to see different countries get a little batch of unknowns available to them that are going to be relevant to their country name. So really cool, really cool idea. I, like, I really like how they did that. All right, and Adam, did you get a chance to, to nerd out on the Silk Road research for Shinies? I did. I nerded out just a little bit, and I got excited. All right, so Silk Road did a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of research, and whenever they they put together these kind of community sourced data aggregations, they get hundreds of thousands of pieces of data. This one was they they took six hundred thousand potential shiny encounters that were captured over the last seven months to get this data. So it's very, very well researched. So. They put out a three-part series, and I mentioned it at the top of the show. On to, you know, Right now, we're going to talk about wild encounters and the shiny rates that are, go with that. Next week, we're going to talk about raid bosses and community day uh, shiny rate. And then in two weeks, we'll talk about egg hatches and research, because these are all new ways to earn, you know, potentially earn a shiny. But let's talk about wild Pokemon. And this is the one that people are going to be able to go into their Pokedex See how many they've caught of that Pokemon, and then bitch at us because they don't have a po- they don't have a shiny yet. Because you know it, it's like the the number, well, the long and short of it, it's one in four hundred and fifty. So it's bullshit. It's, so it's fucking bullshit. Now, I'm calling bullshit. Now look, you got to remember, it's calling not, bullshit. It's not I've a cumulative four, I've thing. I've seen four hundred and sixty six. I, I still I, have of my magic cards. Yes. So they have a they have this this formula that they use to kind of give you the effect of how many would you really need to see to catch one? Because it's one in 450, but how many do you actually have to see? And I think it was something like 700 and change, they said, well, you would probably get one shiny. Now, I know people that have 1,500, 1,800 Swablu and still don't have a freaking shiny one. So I know I've caught... I think 900 Magikarp since the Water Festival last year, some stupid like that. And I don't have a freaking shiny Magikarp. So, yeah, you... I have 850 seen and 685 caught and not a single shiny Magikarp. Yeah, it, it's it's still 1 in 450 with every single one that you choose or every single one you tap on. So it's not like, you know, catching more is going to have this cumulative effect. So... It's 1 in 450. Now, in the main series games, it's like 1 in 4,000. So we have such an exceptional advantage. Now, I love watching, like my son, he loves watching shiny hunting videos on YouTube, like with people playing Sun and Moon, you know, or any of the handhelds. And these guys will do 5,000 soft resets of the game. And then stumble on a shiny and they, you know, they lose their shit, you know, obviously, because they just soft reset it 5,000 times on, on that one specific encounter. So it's like, we're catching shinies like freaking crazy and we're complaining so bad. It's like, we got a good one in 450. That's, a, that's, I don't know. I, I think, I think it kind of nullifies the importance of I think it's bullshit. catching a shiny, but but look, what you got to look in your decks, Melissa. Look in your decks and see mm-hmm. how many, see how many. Well, which one do you want the most? The Magikarp, right? All, all of them. But let's look at your Magikarp. Like, pull up your decks. Yeah. And let's see exactly how many, how many Magikarp you've caught. I'm actually going to look right now too. Four hundred and something. I just, I, I just looked. So yeah. How so, many I've oh, actually that, caught, or how many? How I've many seen? you? How many you've see, seen? Now you got to remember too. Magikarp was out for a year you know, or so before they even announced the water festival last time when the shiny came out. So yeah, I've, I've caught seen 466 and I've caught 405. See, I've seen 1263 and caught 1161. And it's like, where's my shiny man? I just want my shit. What are your swab blues looking like? All right, let's take a look at swab blue. Cause I'm, I'm interested the same in that. Cause, thing, 400 cause I have four, I have four swab blues that are shiny 
and I've seen 1,616, and I've caught 1,056. Holy wow. Goodness. So that's so that's a good. That's like you know one in two hundred or whatever for you. So now I have one shiny Swablu, and I've seen nine twenty three and caught seven sixty six. Oh no! I've I'm only at seen three forty seven and caught. Yeah. Two see, seven. you just gotta get. You just gotta see. You need more at bats. You just gotta yeah, see more Pokemon. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was gonna say something really mean, but the internet stays quiet. All, all I'm saying is, when you catch the shiny Magikarp, we better have some kind of recording device, audio video recording device, because you're going to lose your goddamn freaking mind when this happens. There's no way that's going to happen, because I'd have to record every single Magikarp encounter from now until I catch one. I, I love because... it. It's like watching YouTube videos and they cut together like super cuts, like, ah, nope, ah, nope, shiny check, nope. Up, There's a Magikarp uh, right now in the house. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check oh, it. Oh, man, can it's you a, fucking it's imagine? A, it's, a, it's not. Of course it's not. But it could have been. But is your house a shiny spot? Oh, no. See, my house, my, my Magikarp is not shiny either. Maybe if you go in the bathroom, Melissa. I should have went into the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And it ran, it just fled on me, too. That's Fucking what you that's get. Bullshit. <laughs> that's such bullshit. She probably didn't even throw a curveball. I so, did. And- in this Silph Road oh, data, they, oh, they, they, you need me to catch that for you? No, in the Silph Road data, they um, they also noted that uh, special events have a negligible effect on shiny rates. Specific Pokemon have negligible effect on it. So it's like this was really across the board pretty consistent from any type of wild Pokemon. So like we're in the Water Festival right now. There's tons of Shelter spawning. There's no, there isn't a higher rate of shiny shelter. It's just that people are catching them because there's so many more spawning in the wild. But it's still one in four fifty for the most part across the board. I'm really interested to see the raid boss thing because I am, I'm dying for this Kyogre. We've got a couple days left, and Tuesday and Wednesday of this week, I'm working, you know, twelve hour shift. So I'm not going to be able to raid at all those days. So it's like tomorrow night, I'm going to be able to maybe get one or two raids in. I got two more shots to get a shiny Kyogre. Damn. Um, I'm really, I'll be really bummed out if I don't get one. I'll say if you do it the last day, you're guaranteed one, right? Well, I've caught my, no. I caught Lugia <laughs> and I caught ho on, well, I caught ho on the second to last day and I caught Lugia on the last day last time. So ah, I don't mm-hmm. know. Yeah, I caught him on the last time too. Probably because people are spending so much money to get raid passes. Like, we got to <laughs> we we gotta gotta give gotta them something. <laughs> a couple bits of uh, miscellaneous news I want to talk about, too. There was an interesting uh, Poké Science article that came out on Silph Road that confirmed that, you know, you know how EX passes are delivered consistently across the, the board. Like, when EX passes go out at whatever time, they go out for everyone. So let's say that your team or your squad triggers an EX raid at a specific location and raid passes are going to go out at 4 30 PM that day. Now, if there's a raid egg or a raid happening at that gym that you earned an EX pass for during the time that the EX pass is supposed to be delivered, it'll prevent the EX pass from going out. So you could raid there a hundred times and get the score to trigger the EX raid up well over what you needed. But if there's a raid egg or an active raid during the window that the the passes actually go out, it won't deliver the pass to you. That's probably what happened to the new one we just got. Because I did one right when it like first like launched, and within the first week, we were given um, EX raid passes, but I just did mine early on. So this last week, our group... It happened actually two weeks ago. It happened to our group where everyone was expecting the pass. And we have one dude who lives right by the park where the EX passes go out. And sure as shit, the EX passes go out. Everyone's like, check your phone, check your phone in the Discord. And there's no passes. And they're like, how? How is this possible that no pass went out? And then the dude goes on his map, swings it around. And at the, the gym that would normally trigger it, where we've done like 10 Mewtwo so far, there was a raid egg, like with the timer. So we got screwed out of a out of an EX pass because there was something going on at the gym. So like that sucks. Like can you imagine wow. finally working so hard to get an EX tr- raid triggered in your area and then it gets blocked, <laughs> cock blocked by a freaking a-, a raid egg? Like damn. I don't know if this has happened to you. Maybe you guys, if you ever see like if you consistent have consistently have EX raid passes getting delivered at a specific gym in your area, and then all of a sudden one week there's no EX pass. 
you should try to get someone to recon and see that gym and see if there's an egg or a raid going on because that would totally suck. Let's talk about Let's Go really quick. A little bit of uh, information that's come off post E3. They showed extra footage of someone transferring a Pikachu from Pokemon Go into Let's Go and then battling with it. And then it has the double kick move when it's in Let's Go. So they didn't have to select what move it had. It was assigned the extra moves because in Let's Go, they're going to have four moves. So apparently when you import the Pokemon from Go and then catch it in Let's Go, it's automatically going to assign those two extra moves. So this is interesting implications on how this could potentially be attached to Go. I just, I don't know. Ever since Atari Alex's email a couple weeks ago, it's like I've been thinking more about four moves and it's like, man, I want four moves. Uh, the 55th Global Nest Migration happened a couple days ago on the 14th. Sign up for Silf Road. If you're a member, get on that Nest Atlas and post up. Let people know what is going on in your area. With this water event, I have no idea what my local Nest is at all. Yeah, I think they turn off the ability to even report Nests on event Pokemon when there's an event going on. Because otherwise, everyone would be like, holy shit, this is a Shelter Nest. And it's like, no, it's just a freaking event. But <laughs> we kind of touched on this a little while ago where Adam was saying that he was catching stuff on the one ball or things weren't breaking out. So a lot of people were talking about this increased catch rate for Community Day and that it's still going on. So let us know if you're seeing any difference. And I think Jersey Jay was posting in the Discord. He saw like a not-so-easy-to-catch Pokemon or something like that or Carvana and just had threw a shitty throw on purpose. No berry, no curve or anything like that and caught it on the first ball. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I wish they would communicate this with us and say, hey, this is a benefit of this event. We're going to up the overall catch rate of everything in the game by, you know, 5% or something. I don't know. On a quick note, has anybody noticed that when, like, you catch something, part of, like, the water event, it, like, turns into something different? What do you mean? I just want to put that out there. Like, you throw your ball at Magikarp and you catch it and it's a nominate or no. it's something different, like no. a Pidgey. No, I haven't seen that. I've I've seen where people are catching shiny Pokemon and then it's not shiny in their ledger, like in the log or in the screen, in the inventory screen. But I haven't heard of it being a different Pokemon altogether. I don't know. It's just like I, I noticed it more on Community Day. I was like catching random Pokemon and they would be something else. Like I'd go into my Weird. inventory and I'm like, I know I caught an Ammonite that was like 800 and something CP, like... Why do I have a Pidgey that has 400 CP? <laughs> no, right? My tinfoil hat. I was like, put it, let me put it on real quick. It doesn't look good. You can take it off. All right, let's go into, uh, we have a community email here. We'll touch on this, and then we'll go into our uh, battle party of uh, best-looking Pokemon. But uh, this email is from Atari Alex. We were just talking about his previous email. This is what it says. I just returned to Syracuse from Houston for an extended vacation. Uh, he talks about how the community is booming on certain areas in Syracuse, and it was kind of crazy in Houston. There wasn't a lot going on. Uh, but then he brings up a really awesome point. This is, a, this is a good topic for discussion, and actually my local group was talking about this recently too. He says, When do you think Mewtwo will be retired as the EX Raid Pokemon, and who do you think will be his replacement?" He says, personally, I think it has to be Deoxys, and that'll come before Gen 4, because there's so many legendaries that were introduced in Sinnoh. Now, let Gen 4 do, there's so many freaking legendaries. He says, and I'm sure Arceus will be an EX raid after that comes out. So I'm not sure how they're going to handle Deoxys in its different forms, but it would be cool if there's a different and random for each EX raid. It would give players even more of an incentive to try to get as many EX raid passes as possible. But if Niantic is good at one thing, it's surprising us, so I'm probably way off. Thanks, Atari Alex. All right, so this is a great point. So this is this is what I brought up on our Discord. I was like, guys, we'll go into detail. This is exactly what I was saying. Wait, so before we even talk about who's going to come after Mewtwo, we have to talk about what are they going to do with Mewtwo? So, like, they can't just take him out of rotation because the people that haven't received an EX raid pass yet at all would be, they'd freaking carry pitchforks to freaking, you know, San Francisco to John Hankey's office. If they, <laughs> they lose the opportunity to finally get a Mewtwo that you, you want to talk about community getting pissed off, yeah, that'll happen. Yeah. So they have to do something with Mewtwo. So my guess is that you do something like the recycled legendaries that we're seeing now where like from uh, the research breakthrough. So yeah, now Mewtwo will now go to either special research where they can do a whole nother, you know, 10 part thing or whatever, like they did for Mew. 
So you want Mewtwo, here's your opportunity. You're just going to have to work for it, and it's going to be you know a significant grind to get him. I think that would be the best way to do it that won't piss people off because now it goes from everyone potentially having an open opportunity to, get, to earn an EX Raid Pass, and let's say they're not organized or they're rural and they can't build up the amount of people needed to, to battle to trigger an EX Raid. Now everyone has the opportunity to get Mewtwo. And there's there could be, you know, zero argument for I'm screwed, I can't have Mewtwo because now it's on the plate just like Mew was and everyone can get it. I don't see any other solution to, to removing Mewtwo from the EX raid system than Honestly, putting them in special as say- research. As you're saying this, I'm thinking to myself, like, what if Pokemon just announced that like, you know, Mewtwo's going away from EX raids for a while, it will be back you know, at a certain date. And like they won't do that. Like they frame. will never People do that. Still be because then they're locked into a certain time and they won't do that. That gives them no wiggle room. Okay, okay. So if they do that, then we've got Deoxys. And then I think just along with Atari Alex, we were just discussing this in our Discord that having Deoxys come and then giving us all of his different forms, whether or not they do anything different in game or they add to his stats in any way, shape, or form just be like a different variant, like a shiny. Sure. So like it pops out, it's the defense form. Sweet. I don't have that one. I have five, you know, speed forms, but I have no defense form. Exactly. So it makes you have to consistently acquire enough people to get these EX passes, which I think is the best way. And then once Deoxys has like run its course a little bit as well, you could always reintroduce Mewtwo, but with this time have the shiny possibility to add that additional excitement. Yeah, I, I I think they they have to keep Mewtwo in the mix, and that's why I mean they're they're not doing anything with special research right now. So they, it's like why not just put together another you know eight step grind to get to Mewtwo? I don't know, but the Deoxys thing is exactly right. I mean I know people that have like twenty Mewtwo. They're you know they go to these raids and I'm like all right just another Mewtwo and it's no big deal. And then I also know people that after their first Mewtwo they were like whoo. I can breathe. I don't have to sweat this anymore. It's like, it's no big deal. I got one. So with Deoxys, if they have multiple forms, it's like, yeah, you can get one, but you know, you still, you know, you still don't have, you know, you still don't have them all. So, all four. So I think and that. Then, and then out of the four of them, you want to have one that has good stats. Yeah. It's going to be, it'll, be, it'll just make it exciting that everyone's gathered around the egg and it pops and it, you know, you're going to hear the oohs and ahs because there's going to be certain people wanting certain forms you know, so they can get one of everything or whatever. I think that would be an exciting way to do it. I don't know. I think that's the and way then, to go. And then con- congratulations to whoever has all four that are 100%. Like, what? Exactly. That's right. going to be a feat. That will be something to show off. You know, he says Arceus would be an EX raid after that. Like, Arceus, to me, seems like a Pokemon that you would do special research for. I just don't know why they're sleeping on the special research. I think that enough people have their Mew already. Unlike Melissa, who's had it sitting there ready to to cash in for freaking months, and she hasn't. How many legendaries are in Sinnoh? It's it's insane. You know, you have the Regis, you've got uh, Dialga, and then be like, I, it's just there's I don't know. It's like a dozen something something huge. So it's yeah, like it's they're they're gonna have to figure out a way to roll these out because you're not gonna be able to just say, okay, we have a, a three rotation that's gonna last three months. You know, now you're gonna have either have a longer deployment window for these guys or I don't know what they're going to have to do, but this is a good question. Atari Alex. Thank you. Um, I think the only way to get rid of Mewtwo is to put him in special research. Otherwise people will revolt. And I think, I definitely think Deoxys would makes perfect sense to be the ne- the next EX raid boss. And they have to do this cool thing where, you know, you don't know what's going to pop until you're there. I think that would be cool. Melissa, how many Mewtwo do you have? You have like two or three, right? Um, I think I only have two. Yeah, see, I, I think I'm up to nine, and I have another one on Wednesday. The fatigue is, is there, but I have a 98%, and it's like, yeah, of course I want 100%, but they got to they gotta switch it up soon. I'm still at seven. All right, let's talk about our awesome battle party that we're doing this week. Our what? Our awesome fucking battle, battle party. party. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> what did the consensus oh, say it's about sick. us uh, in our whoop whoop? We're fucking whooping it up. I don't care. We're whooping it up. <laughs> well, we just totally screwed it up. I know. So let's, well, let's continue. Ken, what do you bring? Look, in? it's hard on Skype because we're 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 not. Our, our audio is a little off. You know what I mean. So it's hard to stay synced on Skype. I have to do some movie magic on the back end to line everything up. 
But uh, no, we'll, we'll ultimately we're going to have a, a nice, highly produced uh, battle party whoop whoop jingle. I'm telling you, I'm going to cut it in. But all right, so we're going to put together a battle party of the best looking Pokemon. And again, not necessarily the cutest, just ones that we like their physical appearance. Well, so I, I did the cutest, so. All right, well, that's fine. But this is who I'm bringing. Coughing. I just freaking love his derpy ass smile. And, you know, no matter what, even if he's in trouble and he's got that smile on, it's like everything's okay. Uh, I also chose Jinx just because of the Nicki Minaj thing. I'm just Nicki Minaj, I, Nicki I can't Nicki Minaj. I can't see Jinx without thinking of Nicki Minaj, and it makes me laugh every freaking time. And I'm just like my Anaconda, <laughs> my <laughs> Anaconda. Like every time I just see Jinx twerking, it's great. I'm high on the shiny Pupitar right now. I do dig that purple. Actually, I like the Larvitar green also. I do too. But shiny. The shiny pupils are like both the green and that purple kind of just really pop on the phone screen. And it just looks very deep, you know. And this, I just like the color of the shiny pupitar, so I'm going to put him in there. Uh, Quagsire, I picked because <laughs> it's just derpy and dumb. Uh, Psyduck, just because oh it's a classic. Again, I like I like derpy Pokemon. And, I like uh, derpy and dumb. Derpy and dumb. <laughs> and then I finally, I really switched it up for my final Pokemon. I went with Melodic just because it's beautiful and elegant and is one of my favorite looking Pokemon. So I've got Coughing, Jinx, Shiny Pupitar, Quagsire, Psyduck, and Melodic. What a fucking motley crew. All right. So what I'm going to bring is I've got two Sableyes, the original purple, you know, ghostly being. And then I've got the Shiny because he's yellow. He's gold. And that just the colors on there pop. I uh, love gold. I, yeah, right? No, Sa- Sableye is just the coolest looking Pokemon, in my opinion. And then also, I'm going to bring a Shiny Absol. Looks it sweet. Does. I'm going to bring a Flygon. Fly, he's just, yeah. uh, Flygon looks cool. Pretty, pretty BA. Um, and then Girafferig. Because, like, who doesn't want a <laughs> Girafferig know. half with, like, a ghost butt? <laughs> like a little, little chompy ball and chain on his tail there. And then Ditto. But before y'all get upset that I'm bringing Ditto... Just remember that Ditto is whatever Pokemon you're thinking of bringing in your cool, good-looking Pokemon party, because he can transform into whatever. Yeah, if I brought Ditto, so I, I, would, no I would keep him a Deli pink Bird blobby. In there. Keep him a pink blobby. Oh, shit, there's no Deli Bird. That's, I, hey, I didn't wow. say he's cool-looking. <laughs> How could he? He loves I just beauty. love him. His beauty is not skin deep. <sighs> I'd say he's reasons. cute. i say he's cute. <laughs> All right, yeah. I guess next week we're doing a cute Yeah, we'll do the cute, cute, cute Pokemon battle party. Cute and cuddly. All right, so you have Shiny Sableye, regular Sableye, Shiny Absol, Flygon, Girafferig, and Ditto. I'm telling you, if I brought Ditto, I'd leave him in his pink blobby form. I think so, too. Well, no, that's the thing. He's just going to transform into whatever you're, you want. <laughs> whatever, you, whatever your mind's eye feels at that moment. <laughs> yeah. your, whisp- yep. your whispering eye. Oh, my God. Did you All right, really Melissa, what are you bringing? Eye? He's oh like the wild card. <laughs> <laughs> So I can't, I can't. Okay, so who I'm gonna bring is, I mean, of course you guys know I'm gonna start off bringing my Snorlax because he's oh, just, yeah. you know, the best ever, and then Clefable because look at her little pink wings. Are you kidding me? And Chansey yeah, the wings are awesome. With those eggies, the eggy belly. I mean, you can't. <laughs> and Mew. All right, seriously, like it's Mew and Togepi. Well, like. You gotta bring Togepi. Yeah. Little, little eggies. And my and I'm gonna go with good old regular Wobbuffet. Wow. Well, no, not the female the lipstick. No. <laughs> no. What? Wobbuffet. I like yeah. the lipstick. Yeah, the shoot. lipstick would. Be... <laughs> of course you. Edition. Of course you guys do. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's so dirty, derpy. <laughs> that oh, and next, next week I'm gonna like, make a derpy I'm like one. Like thinking about. I'm thinking about Team Rock and Wobbuffet coming out and being like, <laughs> like just with lipstick. <laughs> oh, all right. So that's that's pretty much a show. I want to read and give two shout outs really quick. We had some new reviews on iTunes. I actually had one of our patrons mention like, hey, what about Google Play? Google Play does not allow for reviews. So when we talk about, you know, hook us, hooking us up with reviews, we limit it to iTunes uh, because that's typically the, the next biggest category. But if you're listening on Stitcher on I, on Android, not in Google Play, you can leave a review in Stitcher. But iTunes is really the main focus. But I, we had two new iTunes reviews, both five star. I wanted to give them a shout out. First is from MJ Pitts thirteen, says this is really funny because he actually was kind enough to leave us a review on the Gotta Watch Them All podcast as well, and he left the lured up pod, uh, review on the Gotta Watch Them All feed, and then the, 
he went to leave the lured up thing and he so he totally crossed the streams but so he wrote the lured up one on the gotta watch them all one i'm not even going to read that i'm just going to read the review that he left on lured up after he realized what he did he just wrote they are good five stars <laughs> i wrote this he goes, he goes i wrote this funny to me review about lured up and posted it to their other show gotta watch them all sigh i just can't be that creative and witty two times in a row so just trust me when i say they're good <laughs> that's awesome thank, thank you mj you. pitch 13 that's freaking awesome and then we had another review five stars from C S I B S twenty four, so maybe C Sibs twenty four says book best Pokemon Go podcast there is, especially if you get Melissa riled up about spoofers. <laughs> <laughs> I know we had to keep her keep her tame tonight. I know. Well, you got to go into the Discord. We didn't want to go too deep. The, 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 the Discord. I gotta stay off from it, or else I'll just rant all day long, and I can't be angry that's all a, day long. No, but that's exactly what our patrons want because it's fucking hilarious. I know, but you gotta understand. Uh, I gotta really it in a little bit because I don't want to become a raging pokey tick. Pokey, pokey tick? tick? What? Yes. Oh, is like, that like a Joltek yes. tick reference? <laughs> oh, yeah. uh, all right, guys. So that's pretty much the show. Thank you so much for checking us out. You can find everything that we do over at gottawatchemall.com. It's got full RSS feeds of both of our shows. If you're interested in Pokemon beyond Pokemon Go, check out our other show, the Gotta Watch Them All podcast that Adam and I do. We cover Pokemon in all its forms, and then we do a watch along with this episode of Pokemon the Series going back from episode one. Holy shit, man. Next time we record will be episode 50 of the Gotta Watch Them All Ugh. podcast, which is That's absolutely insane. amazing. And we are at Gotta Watch Them All pretty much across social media. We're on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Snapchat. Pin, that, Pinterest, Pinterest. I don't know. Are we? We, are, we we definitely are because every time I sign into my freaking computer, it says, "Hi, gotta watch them all. Look at these blinds." I'm like, God <laughs> fucking damn it, Melissa. <laughs> <laughs> But no, honestly, Discord is where it's at. Check out our Patreon, patreon.com slash gotta watch them all. The Discord is freaking hilarious and a lot of fun. I would love it if more people would check it out. A dollar a month on our Patreon. And other than that, I'm at Proud Gamer Tweet on Twitter. Adam, where can they find you? You can find me at Phoenix Back for Fire. And Melissa is the internet and she is on the Discord. And everywhere. I'm everywhere. And everywhere at the same time. I'm telling you, it's worth the freaking dollar just to hear Melissa go lose her shit on Discord. Oh, and we we realized Melissa's like, you know, what's this voice chat thing, right? Because you could have the voice channel on Discord. So we're going to start bringing the voice channel into play. We might do some scheduled uh, patron kind of voice chat hangouts. Pokemon Go Radio does that. I was actually in one of theirs today, and it was really fun because we were just kind of ranting and raving and, you know, no holds barred, just cracking up, laughing at shit. So I think that would be good for us, and, you know, we'll see who we can uh, get to piss Melissa off the most and get her all riled up. Maybe we'll do it before we record, <laughs> so that way she has no no other choice but to let it all spew out on the air. That'd be great. But that's going to wrap it up. Thanks, everyone, for checking us out. We'll see everyone next week. Adam, Melissa, you guys got anything else? No, nope, just keep playing Pokemon. Yay! Enjoy the next couple of days of the water event. Yeah, we'll have big news next week, but we'll talk to you then, and we'll go over everything. Bye. All right. Let's okay. Bye. 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 Bye.